Collimation is always a bit scary for beginners. Even before buying a telescope, you may be fear the collimation because of the myths you read all over the internet. However, those negative feelings will only lead you to a misconception of the reality, which is that collimation is not a monster at all. You may also be tempted to blame collimation when you see the views are not so good with your Dobsonian telescope. However, 99% of the problems don't come from bad collimation, but from other sources. Therefore, to help you and to demystify the collimation process, I will show you how I collimate my Dobsonian telescopes in a quick and easy way and using a very basic language. The collimation tool I love and I use every time, therefore I recommend you to use it, it's the Concenter Ray. This tool is very easy to use, similar to the collimation cap, however, having these concentric circles at the bottom, it will turn your collimation process much easier, much simpler and very accurate. You have the links of all the materials I use at the description below. And if you don't have a concenter or you don't want to buy it right now, I suggest you to use a simple collimation cap, but buy one. It's inexpensive and it's worth it. It's true you can make one at home, but in my opinion isn't worth it. Because the collimation cap is so inexpensive that buying a brand new one you will make sure that is very precise. Now let's see how I collimated my 18 inch Dobsonian telescope using the concenter, of course, and a simple blank sheet of paper. You will see in a moment why. Collimation is just the alignment of the collimation optics. The light that comes from the sky entering the telescope from the top bumps on the bottom in the primary mirror, which is slightly curved, projecting it as a cone to the secondary mirror at the top, and then it will reflect to the focuser, where we have our eyes or a camera. Therefore, to align everything and have a nice image, we start by the secondary mirror and this mirror has four knobs one at the middle that hold and pull the secondary mirror outwards and three more knobs around it which will push the secondary mirror downwards and all these four knobs acting as two opposite forces when very well tightened will keep the secondary mirror stiff and quiet in its place important tip if you only lose the three knobs, it will happen nothing to the mirror. However, if you unscrew the middle knob all the way out, the mirror will fall. The solution is simple. Every time you play with the middle screw, hold the secondary mirror with the other hand. Of course, without touching the mirror surface, ever. And here's another tip. Make sure you work this part with the tube horizontally positioned. That way you avoid major problems until in the future you have the confidence to work at the top. Now let's insert a piece of white paper behind the secondary mirror and then look through the cap or the concenter. The goal is to get the secondary mirror centered to the focuser and here the concenter tool shine bright because with those concentric circles it turns your job much easier. Important tip, forget the small central donut for now. This is a common mistake people often make, but to center the secondary mirror, you don't need to focus your attention in the donut. Pay attention to this image. It's all right, it's fine. Everything is concentric and that was the goal. So with that tip in mind and to reach this concentric image in your eyes, you need, of course, to play with the secondary mirror. And that's when most people mess it all. To make it easy, remember your body is on vertical, but the tube is not. So that means when you're looking through the collimation tool, what you are watching is at the left, the top, at the right, the bottom direction, and the up and down position. Okay, now, if you need to adjust your image to the left or to the right, you need to play with the central bolt. 
that means if you lose the central bolt, the secondary mirror will move to the right. But if instead you tight the central bolt, the secondary mirror will move to the left. Remember, when you tighten the central bolt, you will need to lose probably the three other screws. While doing that adjustment, you should also play with the secondary mirror, rotating it up and down, which is called the rotation, but also adjusting the tilt. Those are all the movements that you need to do in order to get the secondary mirror aligned. What I usually do is, when I see that it's aligned, I quickly tighten the three other knobs to keep it all close to the alignment and then make small adjustments to those knobs, tightening them very well. That's another mistake people often do. They fear to tighten the secondary mirror knobs and then they lose collimation using the telescope, of course. That's all metal, no problem at all, tightening them very well. You want everything to be well tightened. These are not the clamps of the primary mirror, so tighten very well. This was the harder part, now just make tiny adjustments until you have everything fine. However, if the secondary mirror is not centered in the focuser after this process, you may have tilt in the focuser. Sometimes it happens, and it happened to me, with my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope, and I solved that, taking out the focuser, and using a piece of foam as a shim. But be careful and make sure it is really a focuser tilt and not you just centering the secondary mirror in the wrong way. Important tip, in my images you can't see because of the reflection, but there's a shadow which is not concentric, it's the only thing that will be not concentric and it's to be like that. It's the secondary mirror shadow and if you did well the alignment, it should be pointing towards the opposite side of the focuser. Now let's go to the primary mirror. Now unlock the locking knobs of the primary mirror at the bottom and play with the three collimation knobs at the bottom also to get the donut centered. There are six knobs at the bottom, three of them are locking knobs and usually are white. In other telescopes they are different though and usually the thinner ones like for instance in my 6 inch virtuoso telescope which by the way it's the telescope i mostly recommend to beginners although it's much easier than collimating the secondary mirror to collimate the primary mirror takes a bit more of time and it's much easier in smaller telescopes where you can be watching through the collimation cap while your right arm can reach the collimation knobs. You may find with time that it is very satisfying to adjust the donut in a primary mirror. When everything is aligned, you get like a boost of dopamine. When it's done, tighten the locking knobs, well tighten it, but softly, and keep checking the collimation tool because those locking knobs change the collimation. Be aware about that. You may also need to fine tune a bit the secondary mirror, the first alignment. But don't be a perfectionist, this is to enjoy. And now that you know how to properly collimate your telescope in a simple way, you should check this video over here to know different upgrades that you can do to your telescope and improve your views.